I realize Satan doesn't like this topic, but he doesn't have to mess with my computer, or not him, but one of his minions. Every time I try to make a really important video, I have computer problems. What I had ended the last increment saying is that Paul is talking about a new covenant here. See? Revelation made known to me. This is new material. Hello. Mystery is a nickname for church in the New Testament. Your average Calvinist and Catholic knows that. He knows that there's a different covenant. I mean, because, you know what? Catholicism does not practice animal sacrifices. What they did is they, they mixed pagan culture at the time and they mixed Jewish culture into their, you know, mishmash version of Christianity. Calvinists figured that out and they rebelled against that mishmash, but they made their own mishmash, which is largely Catholic in nature. And pretty much all the other denominations have followed suit because they're antagonistic to the Jews. Left hand side in blue tells you why. Paul is writing to anti Semitic Romans, trying to explain to them don't be anti Semitic. Now this is the same guy. He wrote Romans on the left and he wrote Ephesians on the right. Revelation made known to me means new Bible. Okay? Other generations not made known to the sons of men. Jews didn't know this information that he's got. It's a different covenant. It's different information. It applies to a different group. To be specific, Gentiles and their fellow heirs of the body Partakers of what? The promise in Christ Jesus. Not the promise to the Jews. The promise in Christ Jesus. Now the book of Hebrews is going to key off Ephesians to explain what Paul is talking about in more detail. The promise in Christ Jesus goes back to Psalm 110. It's battlefield royalty. It's a different kingship. Not the Jewish kingship. And then Christ beat Satan on the cross, that's Hebrews 1 and 2, and Psalm 110. And because of that, he forges a new covenant, which was promised in Jeremiah 31 to the Jews, yes. But he's forging it first as a new covenant to church. You have to read the book of Hebrews several times to get this. The Catholics and Calvinists don't do that. It's a separate covenant. It's a separate kingship. It's a separate priesthood. That's the theme of what Hebrews is talking about. But he's keying off Paul when he does that. Partakers in the promise of Jesus Christ. Our inheritance is in Christ, not in Judaism. The Jews got their own deal. Now let's see if I can scroll. Oh good, my mouse is suddenly working again. Okay. Not as a result of works. Uh, that's another bugaboo with the Calvinists, so I'm going to leave that out. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now right here, the word for is ionic dative. I have to get Greeky on you for a minute. It's an ionic dative, and even Thayer's lexicon knows that. My pastor spent a lot of time teaching this verse when he was exegeting Ephesians for seven years. He took seven years to exegete this book. This is an ionic dative. And the works here are God's works. There's no fronting definite article. Okay, I think there's no fronting definite article. Let's, let's find out. Okay. Yeah, see? No article. Epi, that epi there is ionic dative. Ergois, in my badly pronounced Greek, is no, there's no definite article in front of ergois. It means it's divine work. Agathos in Greek always means divine good. It's cultural meaning. Okay? It's not human good. It's divine good. It's got the gods working out their good in man. Not man doing anything. So Paul is stressing here divine good. Okay? So when it says created in Christ Jesus for good works, it's talking about the works that God re God um, puts in you that he does in you created in Christ Jesus not created in Israel okay 
So the left hand side is being used and divorced from the rest of the New Testament to justify a position called replacement theology, you can Google on it, to say, well, all the promises to Israel we get instead. We are, we are the new Jews. Okay? 90% of, Christian, of Christians adhere to some form of that. So that's why 90% of Christians are wacko. I've always wondered, you know, when I was growing up, I hated being around Christians, still do. I try to isolate from myself from them as much as possible. I do not like to associate with Christians. Because they have wacky ideas of the Bible. They don't do their homework. They're very slipshod and they're very annoying. Brother this, brother that, full of hypocrisy. I can't stand them. Okay? But this is why they're wacko. Left hand side of the screen in blue. We replace Israel. Yeah, you know. Okay, but Paul isn't saying that. Ephesians 2.10, we are created in Christ Jesus for divine works. And I'll put a link in the video description where I cover this passage in detail in Greek. Because my, my pastor spent a lot of time on it. And this was how I came to learn. My pastor didn't know this as far as I can tell. This is how I came to learn that Paul's whole letter of Ephesians is based on the Greek, Greek play Ion by Euripides. He's, he's tracking his words to the play because all of his Greek readers would understand that and they would laugh and get, the, get more out of the doctrine he's teaching if he did that. Okay? Which God prepared beforehand. Etoi mazo. Where is it? Pro etoi mazo. Pro etoi mazo. Yeah, pro etoi mazo. All right? Prepared beforehand. God did it. These are God deeds. I've been doing a whole series on God deeds now. I'm not done with it yet. I've still got a lot to post, but the bulk of it is, is done now. God deeds. We are His workmanship. See? Tizo. God does the creating. All right? And that's the parsable. You can see in the lower right hand window. This is the whole story right here in front of you, Ephesians 2.10. This is what's happening now. God is creating fit bride. Israel was supposed to be the bride of Christ when he came, but she said no, Vashti. Vashti kind of thing. So God is seeking a new Esther. That's Matthew 22. That's the only thing we replace. Israel forfeited that because she said no. She's not going to be bride of Christ. We are. 